Hey everybody, today Rado runs down Twa Dice. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Twa, everybody. Although it might look a little bit different than its big brother, Twa the board game. This is a bingo style dice game where every round, four dice are going to be rolled. One of them is a terrible event that can um, bring ruin to the city. And the other three dice give us opportunities to gather resources or build buildings to score lots of points. Now, I'm going to be doing a solo run through today because, like I said, this is a bingo style game. Uh, this game plays exactly the same if you're playing solo or if you're playing with 100 players. I guess if you wanted to use all the different sheets of paper that come with it. And in fact, if you have a copy of Twa Dice, go get it off the shelf. We can play together right now because we all have equal access to all the dice. Hold on, folks. Before you go get your copy, fair warning, I only played through the first half of the game in this rundown. It's Essen Month! There are too many games for me to cover, so I just don't have enough time to play all the way through. So, you'll still get a good idea of how to play, but um, if you want to play with me, well, you won't be making it to the end. Uh, just FYI. Let's continue. Now, before we get going, there's one thing I have to do. I have to roll a die to find out what the layout of the city is. Boop! And it's a two. So that means two, three, four, five, six, one. And we do this for all the areas, and everybody does this, just to kind of randomize the layout of the city a bit, because these columns have a lot to do with how we are going to build. All right, so we got that done. Now, let's get going. The game takes place over eight days and eight nights. We are on um, day number one, <coughs> and we roll. Okay. So, now we are going to take these four dice and put them in the four day slots. Oops, this should be over here. Let's go ahead and randomize that. Doo. All right, yeah, it's a, it's a royal one right there. Okay, so uh, these are the four day slots for day one. These are the, um, well, uh, these are the four night slots for day one. We'll get to that in the second round, because it's daytime, and we have to lay these dice out um, from lowest to highest, lowest to up to highest. So, the lowest value was a 3. So, this 3 strikes right there. And oh my gosh, that's a terrible place to start because as part of random setup, we have three banquets. Then the banquets go on these specific tiles that are the same on both sides. And these are spots that we can get good things happening. But unfortunately, this struck right here and destroyed the banquet. This has now become a blighted area, which means in the future, any die that will go on this space is a zero. We've lost the ability to um, get more efficient worker ho uh, housing if this had stuck around. But basically, wherever this die goes, it hits that plaza. And in this case, if the plaza has a banquet, it turns the uh, banquet into a raid. And so now that has been downgraded for the rest of the game. Drat! Didn't even get a chance to use it. But, say la vie, there's still two other banquets waiting for us this evening that we can go to. Right, anyway, so that was the lowest value die, and then we've got a four, and then we've got a four, and then we've got a six. All right. Uh, and by the way, if this had been a four as well, the disaster die is considered to be slightly lower than the regular dice. So it, uh, still, this would have gone here, and then the other fours would have been considered higher value, and then the six. All righty. So, now... Everybody can take one turn by picking one of these three dice to use the ability of, of well, of the, the royals, the religious, or, if there were any yellows, the civic uh, powers of the game. And the higher the die, the more it costs. This white six, which is related to religion, costs two coins. This red four costs one. This red four, well, it costs my choice. One coin, one influence, or one knowledge. And we can never choose the disaster die. So this is just right out. So, which one do I want? Well, it depends on what I want to do. Whichever of these dice I'm going to pick, I'm going to do one of three things with it. Simplest thing is, I can just gather resources. If I spend two coins, I can get six knowledge. The uh, white die, and you can tell, this is really, this is a see-through die. But right now, it's a white die. And this is not a see-through, this is a red die. That's why they're transparent. So you can see, you pretend this is a white die, effectively. And if I spend two coins to get it, that will let me fill up the white knowledge track by six. And at the beginning of the game, I already have three knowledge. If I get one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll unlock another scholar over here, or a clergy member. Uh, if I spend two coins to get this one. Now, 
If I spend one coin to get this one, or I could spend a coin or anything to get this one, that means I, instead of getting white knowledge, I am getting red uh, influence. Uh, red is related to royalty, so I could take... Uh, remember, this is, a, if this is a red four. I could get four influence, which would get me one more red royalty member. Now, unfortunately, uh, there are no white dice. So if the... Or, I'm sorry, the yellow. The yellow is money. So if any of these had landed on money and I'd taken it, I'd get more money. And I need money to be able to buy dice, although this one's always free. Um, although, unfortunately, there's not one to buy here because that's where the disaster struck this time. So, do I want to get resources? Do I want to get more military or more knowledge? Now... I do have a little bit more flexibility because the reason we get these resources is to manipulate the dice. The money lets us choose if we're going to pay for the more expensive die. The red influence lets us change the value of the die. I've got three influence. I could spend that to turn this four into a six. If I want a red six instead of a red four, I just got to spend two of these and I can consider this a six. For everybody else, it's still a four. And I could get six influence for one buck. Although I'd have to pay two influence to turn this into a red six. The white knowledge lets you change the color. If I wanted this to be a yellow six so that I could get six bucks, I would have to give up two knowledge to um, and then pay two bucks to get six bucks. So that's a possibility. So that's how the one of the things you can do, gathering more resources, gathering influence, knowledge, and money, and you're going to need it over the course of the game. Plus, at the end of the game, every two influence, money, or knowledge that you did not lo lose scores you a point. So, you want to get the stuff just for points, if nothing else. Now, the other things we can do with these is build either a prestige building or a worker building. The worker buildings, um, which come in again in three colors, white, red, and yellow, uh, just give you more citizens for the city, which are points. Every citizen is worth a point at the end of the game. And if we get more and more citizens, you see we unlock stuff. Like, if we get three of each type of citizen, we get a free coin, influencer, knowledge. If we get uh, six of each type, then we get a free worker building. And as we keep going up, we can get more and more stuff. Plus, these are all worth points at the end of the game as well. So, if I spent two bucks, I could build a white worker building in column number six, if I wanted to build over here. If I wanted to build a red worker building, well, I could pay one coin or I could pay one influence or one knowledge instead to build a red building in column four, as an example. And those would just be starting to get me points and trying to get closer to unlocking all the bonuses I can get off of that. Now, the last thing you can do is instead of building worker buildings, you can build prestige buildings. And each of them have different functions. Building a prestige red building is a wall to protect the city. So I could build... And in fact, you know what? I think... Am I going to do that? Yes. I'm going to start out by using this red four. Alrighty. And I could spend one coin, one influence, or one knowledge to get it. I'll go on ahead and spend one knowledge. All right, so I um, only have two knowledge left. I should have <laughs> done that from the left to the right, but you get the idea. Uh, I'll still use these two knowledge for something else, and more of it will fill up. I don't know why I did that out. Anyway. So I'm spending one knowledge to get this. It's a red four. And remember, that red four means I could either build this little uh, red royalty mansion, I suppose, to get two more royalty, but instead, I am using it to, um, I'm sorry, uh, in column four, to build my first wall to actually protect the city. So I mark that I built this, and by the way, when I built this, I just got a little, um, you know, civilian, a, a civic worker, um, which is worth one point, and I'm getting close to unlocking all those bonuses. And um, so I, I got whatever uh, character was in the city, plus, more importantly, I built, woohoo! a protective wall. And that means any time that the disaster die in the future would come up as a four, the world is safe. Um, because once we get to the third day, these disaster dice won't only hit the plazas and the banquets, they'll start hitting our city as well. I have just built up defenses. I won't have to worry about evil fours coming anymore. And that's all it does for me. It doesn't make me points like some of the other stuff does. I mean, the or yellow build prestige buildings get me all get me resources based on what's available in the city at the moment. The uh, white prestige buildings, these cathedrals, they give me points at the end of the game based on the other types of buildings. But for starters, I just wanted to get some protection. Plus, I got a little, and that was it. Now, 
You, of course, if you're playing along, you have chosen one of these, and you've paid whatever resources you needed, and you might have built a wall, or um, you might have uh, converted this into a yellow four and built a uh, guild shawl, I think is what they're called, so that you could get money out of it. But anyway, we have finished the morning of the first day. It is now time to go on to the evening, which means we roll all the dice again, and it's a four! But we, all right, so anyway, we got to put them in again, lowest number. This is the first, so that's a one, and a one, and a three, and a four. So this went into the highest, and uh, this blew out this plaza. And by the way, folks, this plaza got flipped. But remember, these plazas don't change colors. Um, so it just came back, and now this is the site of a raid. Any die that comes here is a zero, which is kind of a bummer. Now, this plaza just got hit. We can see that when it gets flipped, it's going to turn into a religious plaza instead of a civic plaza. So this is going to change the makeup of the city. And because this just got hit, there is one less yellow uh, moneymaker in the city because it just got raided by the four. Okay. And um, now... I get to pick any of these, and hey, both of these banquets are up. Now, this if I take this die, which is currently a yellow one, what this is saying is, normally, to manipulate the color of a die, I have to spend two knowledge, but I can change the color of this die with only one knowledge. At least, as long as this banquet doesn't get destroyed and turned into another raided spot, in case the disaster hits it. This one is saying that if I build the, um, the civic... Uh, prestige buildings, which is what that little symbol is. That's a picture of this of the yellow prestige building. I it basically produces more than it normally would, and that's very interesting to me. Ooh, I like that a lot. In fact, I think of all of these dice. Remember, I could pick anyone I want. I'm going to pick this one, which again is in. Although if I pick this one, I wouldn't have to pay anything. But I'm going to pick this one, which means I have to give up a coin, a prestige, or a um. Oh, what do you call it? Uh, a knowledge. I don't want to give up any more knowledge because I need a pair of knowledge to be able to change colors, except for in this space. Um, and in fact, yeah, I'm going to have to change this to do what I want to do, I think. Yeah, I'll be honest. This is kind of insane, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. All right, so I'm choosing this one. I've already paid the one knowledge I needed for it. And now I'm going to spend my other two knowledge to consider this to be a yellow one instead of a red one. But I'm not done manipulating this. I am going to spend all of my influence, which remember lets me change the value, to change this to a 2, 3, 4. So I've spent all my influence, and I've spent all of my knowledge, basically, to make this a yellow 4. Now again, for any other players, if you're playing along, this is still a red 1. But for me, it's a yellow 4. And now, I am going to build, since it's a yellow four, I'm building in column four, which is the one that I, I saved, um, which means I feel kind of, well, anyway, it's, it's fine. And I'm going to, I could either build a worker um, cottage, which will give me a couple, but I want to build the prestige building, because remember, this banquet says the prestige building is going to produce more than normal. And how does that work? Well, the yellow prestige buildings, they basically provide money or citizens or knowledge or influence based on the number of uh, colored dice that match them that's in the city currently. Or I should say, in the section of the city, in this nighttime section, there are one, two. There used to be three, but there are still two yellow um, plazas. So these are considered yellow dice. Now, strictly speaking, this is a yellow die for me, but it's still considered a red die for the purposes of scoring. So, building this... Um, so, this is a yellow four, which means I can build this... Woohoo! Guild Hall. And I get three bucks for every yellow um, die. Really, every yellow plaza. There's one, two, so that means six. But this says, that, you know, you notice this is not a red die. This is pink, because there is no pink. So this is representing any colors. That means I can consider this a yellow uh, uh, plaza as well for the purposes of this particular building. So I just spent all of my influence, all of my knowledge to get... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine coins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which was so much, I just got 
two more um, yellow citizens, uh, which means I'm on my way there. That's two more points. But now I am loaded. I can only get one, two, three, four, five, six more over the course of the game. So I gave up a lot, but I use this to really get a huge payday. I'm not going to have to worry about money for a while. And like I said, that was maybe a bit crazy, but it just goes to show what you can do. I mean, you don't like the dice? If you've got the resources, you can manipulate them however you want. So anyway, we have finished day one of eight. We move on to day two, and we get the dice back. And it's going to be daytime, and this gets flipped. So now there's one less um, you know, civic area in the city. And let's see what day two brings us. All righty, we go from lowest to highest. There's a one and a one. And a two, kaboom, the disaster hits, and a five. So fortunately, this banquet was spared. But this area, we will not be um, using this slot. And at the end of the round, this is going to turn into another royalty, nobility area. Okay. And, um, right, what am I going to do? Well, hmm. I've got all the money in the world, so I can be exp I can be spendy. I although this is interesting, I could spend two bucks to get five bucks, and I'd have one, two, three, four, five. I'd only have one more dollar I could earn over the course of the game. But I think I have enough money. Although right now this is saying normally I would have to spend two um, knowledge to change the color of this, but I only have to spend one if I chose this die. But I have no knowledge, and um, I think it's time to build. Time to build a little more. So, even though I've got all the money in the world, I'm just going to take this red one, and it's not going to cost me anything. And so, I come over, and I could use this to get one red influence, but that's not. I'm going to build in column number one. And I can choose to build a little worker building, which will get me two nobility, or I can build another wall, which is what I am going to do. So, this didn't cost me anything. Oop, or, sorry, yeah, to, to build this wall, which gave me a little clergy member. And boop, 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 boop. Now, I'm protected from evil ones and evil fours. Again, these don't do me any points. I got a couple of points there. And there's more. If I could build now a wall in column six, I'd get another clergy, and I'd unlock this bonus one as well. Same as if I can build in wall five, I'll get two more civilians. So there's a little bit of combo stuff going on there. But anyway, I'm just building up protections. And the reason is, because ultimately, I am planning if... Things don't blow up in my face. This is kind of dangerous to build the cathedral. This one. If I can build, uh, if there's a white two in my future, I could build this cathedral, which will give me points for every wall I've built. So they can be worth more in addition to the protection they offer. So anyway, so that's why I chose. I didn't pay anything. I chose this red one to build my second wall. And um, that was that. And you might have built something if you're playing along. Or right, this doesn't flip. This becomes a civilian. I don't know why I did that. And we move on to the second evening. Whee! And let's see, we got a one, and a low three, and a high three, and a five. Okay, and remember I was talking about getting that white two. Unfortunately, it's a white three! Bum, bum, bum. Anyway, and this is knocked out. And uh, so this white three would let me build this building that would give me points for um, the red... Let's see, which one was it? Yeah, for the red worker buildings. I'm not building those. I'm building the walls. I need a white two. And if I had any influence, I could spend some of it to turn this white two or white three into a white two, and I'd be set. But I burned all my influence. So I am stuck. I can buy anything because I'm super rich, but I have no influence and no knowledge. So, uh, and this is interesting. This has fallen here again. Again, this would be totally free to take this red one. Um, and now, there is no reason for me to build this red one up here. I could build the red one and get a couple more royalty, uh, potentially. Or I could um, try to build a civic building. And that's not bad. So I'd be building, if, if, I, tr if I consider this... Oh, wait. Oh, no, no. It's a red, so it has to be here. I'd have to be able to turn this into a yellow. If I could turn this into a yellow, then I'd be building this building, which would give me citizens based on the number of uh, white tiles. And there's only one, so that's not that great. So do I want to build this and just get a couple, or do I want to spend some money? Is that because... Oh, yes, I do. I'm going to spend two coins, because I do got them, as I made all that, so that I can get this red five, so I can build yet another wall. 
All righty. And that gave me a civilian and this one as well. So I just got two more. Boom, boom. All right. And that's that's six points down here. And um, walls. And uh, I'm going to be safe. And you'll see very, very soon at, at the beginning of day three how these walls are going to save my bacon, potentially. All righty. So that was it. Other players might have all chosen whatever they're going to do. This flips and becomes more clergy. And we move on to day three. And you will notice the icon just changed. Things just got more dangerous. From now on, the uh, disaster die will, uh, you know, blight, you know, these uh, plazas and maybe uh, destroy the banquets. But they can also start hitting us too. So let's see what we get. All right, and it's day three morning. All righty, perfect. Ah, uh, very nice. So uh, let's go from low to high uh, for the morning. There's a four, and a four, and a five. Oh no, this banquet is gone. Well. Did I even ever get to use it once? No, I didn't. Um, and a six. And so not only is this plaza taken offline, not only has this banquet become a, a, a blighted thing as well, but everybody gets hit in um, column five, the yellow district. So everybody would have to wipe all this out. Now, if they'd previously built buildings here, those buildings would remain, but they couldn't build the other buildings. This whole area got raided because it was a yellow five unless somebody had the foresight to build a wall. Because I built this wall, my entire five is protected. I'm protected from fives, from fours, and ones. And so I still have the opportunity to build these buildings later in the game. But any player who didn't build a wall here, well, hopefully they already built buildings because they'll still stand, but they lose the ability to lose other ones. So this did not bother me at all. Other than it is very sad that the, our once wonderful banquet has changed such that we cannot use knowledge to change the die that's in this location. So in the future, whatever die goes here, it's going to be that color, nothing we can do about it. And it's interesting, it'll always be yellow because this token never changes. Alrighty, so this will always be yellow. And that was that, and you can see how building those walls, even though they weren't giving me many points, although I do plan on building this, did I get the... No, I didn't! I need a white too! But now, I can see, not, come nighttime, there's a decent shot because there's a lot of clergy working at night I'll probably be able to get that white too although if I want to guarantee it maybe I should give myself some um, prestige how about I s Ooh. I was gonna spend two bucks of, of all the money I've got to get si uh, six prestige that'll give me another noble that would have been nice plus um, and then I'd be able to guarantee manipulate the die so I can get what I want next turn and get this build because remember this could get hit at any time in fact this is dangerous next round this is gonna get rolled and if it was a five um, well it might be the red or it might be that uh, you know one of these areas gets goes away although if it's a five I don't mind because I'm protected from ones fours and fives I could also you know, I could get a bunch of, uh, what do you call it, uh, influence so that I could manipulate the dice, although you can never manipulate disaster, or I could build this wall, which would unlock another bonus, and I'd have two-thirds of my city totally protected. That's a tough choice. That is a tough choice. But, uh, no, I, I think I, I do want to be able to get this so I can get the building I want. So, I'm going to spend two more bucks to go for the most expensive one. And this is a red six, which means I could build here um, and get two more. But nope, I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six. And I just got a little. So I'm on my way. If I get uh, some more of these, I'll get another resource of my choosing. Hooray, and that's that. And now I hope I don't regret this. You don't better not roll a six. You better roll one, four, or five. That's all I want to see from you, pal. All right, so that's what I did. Um, I, I, yeah, I just got resources, including getting a little person, instead of building this wall. Let's see if we come to regret that as it moves on to nighttime. And this, uh, you know, this is one of the special ones that never flips. The ones that are uh, red, yellow, and white on both sides, those are where the banquets are put as part of setup. So anyway. Black four, five, or six. That's what we want to see. Or black one, five, or what? One, four, five. I gotta visualize one, four, five. That's what. It, that's that's how we do it, folks. Okay, so it's nighttime. Boom. And look, there's the white. I two I wanted. I didn't even need all this. I've got exactly what I want. This is what I'm taking. I gotta spend one buck. One. I'll spend one influence. Um, let's see. I've already spent these three, so I've spent that to get this. This is a white two, and it lets me build. Although. Ugh. Here's the problem, folks. Here's the problem. 
Um, if the first two cathedrals I build, there's a little reminder right here, the first two cathedrals I build, they will match a particular type of building and they'll give me one point for it. So, if I, I've already built three walls. If I lock this in now, it means each of my walls will be worth one point. If this is the third cathedral that I buy, then each one of my walls would be worth two points. If it's the fifth or the sixth cathedral, each of my walls would be worth three points. So I, am I going to lock them in as low scores now? Mm, or, or, um, or... I could say, hey, you know what? I, I paid uh, influence for this. I could say, you know what? I'm not going to build this cathedral right now. I'm just going to get myself a couple of little clergy. Let's go on ahead and build this building. Wee, dee, dee, dee. And now I've got two clergy. Now, if I can just get two royalty, I will get another resource of my choosing. So I did that. Oh, I, oh, okay. <laughs> that was not my original plan, but say la vie. And uh, we move on. Oh, by the way, and you know, this was, I, you know, I always forgot when the, the plaza moves away. So I couldn't do that. That's why I chose. We're on to day four. This becomes a yellow zone. And we roll. Wah! And oh no, it's a black two. I'm not protected. So what do we got? Uh, the black two, and then the regular two, and then another regular two, and a regular three. Day four. My um, red district has been raided. And I never built a wall. And now I never can. Those are offline. I will never get to build these. Which means, since I can't build that, even if I build that, I'll never be able to get that or that bonus either. A crushing blow! I curse you! But, you know, I mean, I, I had time to build walls. You, you, you can't protect everything, folks. Sooner or later, I mean, the city's under so much threat, some areas are going to get hit. Now, other players might have built a wall there, and they're uh, laughing all the way to the bank because they're very happy. But, all right. So what am I going to do? I've got some money makers, or some guild hall makers, or... And wouldn't you know, I could just now build the red wall and protect it, but it's too late! Too late! But, you know what I could do? It's not too late to protect this area. Um, oh, and another thing, by the way, folks, this is super dangerous. Because this area has now fallen, that means there's no protection. If I, ha if I really wanted to wait until I built several other cathedrals to build this one so that my walls could be worth more points, I needed to get this wall built immediately because now a this hitting a, uh, a, a basically a white 2 disaster will wipe this out. And that could happen any time. And there's a decent shot it will happen next round. That I will lose this, which means my walls will never be worth anything. And now, now I've got to decide. Although... What can I do? Unfortunately, I, I cannot change the color of these dice because I have no knowledge. So I couldn't make this now even if I wanted to. Urgh. I could um, turn this into a 3 using some of my influence to build a wall there. Or heck, I got enough influence. I could turn it into a 6 and make another connector there. But, or, or, I could, um... Oh. Yeah, I mean, and, and this, you know, we might get hit in the in the threes next round. Or the sixes. It's unlikely, because if this is a six, it'll probably be up here, but it could be there. What am I going to do? Well, honestly, folks, I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Twa Dice is all about. And, folks, this is awesome. <laughs> I really, really like it, and, of course, I was predisposed to like it, because... I love rolling rights. I love bingo style games, and I love, love, love Twa. Twa is in my top 10 games of all time. And while this certainly does not eclipse Twa, I mean, how could it? It's just a cute, fast little bingo y rolling right game. There is a lot more going on in this game than what we normally get in rolling rights because, hey, we've been getting a lot of them over the last few years. I'm not going to say this is as heavy as a uh, Roman roll, which uh, I think is probably still the heaviest rolling right on the market today, but this one definitely has surprising hidden depths. And and um, I know this because I've actually played it several times now, and my best score was 52. But according to this little achievement guide on the back, um, I shouldn't rest on my laurels until I get at least 65. And that's been eluding me so far. So I think there's a lot of going. I've read about people getting like 70 points. And um, like, let me uh, show you a game I played. 
Uh, here, here's a finalized one. And by the way, folks, I strongly recommend playing with a pencil because you will think and rethink and rethink as you are playing. And this was a 46-point game, and it gives you an idea. Hey, I got a fair number of points from Citizens, and I kind of went heavy on Cathedrals early um, so that my walls could be worth level uh, two points. So, And I ended up getting five, almost all of my walls built, which was pretty nice. Although I didn't, in this game, I didn't do hardly any civic building. Did I do any? I don't think I did, um, so I feel like I maybe uh, failed a little bit. And several spots got um, blighted before I could actually get my defenses up, but I was just focused on trying to get as many points as I could out of them. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, with all of these different things you can focus on, based on what the dice will give you, or what you can do to make the dice give you what you want, you have a lot of different avenues uh, to pursue. Whether you're just going for huge citizenry um, bonuses or trying to leverage those cathedrals or, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't even know. And like I said, because I'm still in the low 50s. Um, but I do look forward to continuing to play this game and get better and better and better at it. I, I think the mechanisms are so clever. Uh, you know, the idea of, you know, I mean, one thing I do know, it's definitely important to be thinking about, right, what am I going to, which time am I going to use this turn? But what dice might show up next turn? Because I can see what the, you know, hey, ne next night time, there's going to be uh, two royalty and two religion tiles. So I could take a guess at what what probabilities are going to be rolled? Am I going to get that four or five uh, that I might be waiting for? Is it too late for that because it already got destroyed? So thinking about this round and the next round is hugely important to make more informed decisions rather than just saying, well, okay, I guess I'll just go for the cheap one because that seems fine. Uh, sometimes that might not be the most obvious. Although, don't listen to me because I'm still learning the ropes. Uh, but like I said, I very much look forward to learning the ropes and playing with you know all the different uh, you know combinations of the banquets you can get. Which, by the way, I didn't mention. These are an optional variant. You could play without them, but I wouldn't want to because they just add that much more replayability on this tiny little board. Uh, that every time there's going to be different opportunities, different uh, strategies to chase after in Twa dice. It's awesome, folks. And that was the rundown. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye